Hey everybody, I'm Lex from Dead Gentry. This is William. This is William snagging his glove. Sorry, I almost bonked you there. I have a little video in another one. I'll try to edit it in. But we did. We we got the Italian Sorrento. I couldn't leave it. William really couldn't leave it. He was the one who first saw it. And then I had to go there in the back. And like, oh, that's an understatement. It's so pretty. Look at all this. Oh, look at all the work. Look at all the detail. Okay. So anyway, just had to mention we could, that we did get it. <laughs> I couldn't leave it there. So we did some estate sales today. I did take footage. Unfortunately, I, I probably will not be using much of that footage. Um, awkward situations at some of those estate sales. Just really quickly, if you happen to run estate sales, I mean, I'm th if this guy knew what he did to himself today, right. he would be kicking himself in the booty. He 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 the the amount of money he lost in one unpleasant altercation that was so unnecessary and didn't need to happen is just absurd. Generally, it's good to treat your customers nicely. Yes, and don't make assumptions of others. Yeah. Uh, so just quickly, simple explanation. We went to an estate sale. We were there to um, look for a specific item, an oil painting. We were trying to see if it was the authentic one or not it, for a patron that does our service one of the where they want us to seek out by a specific artist and we were trying to see if it was the real deal or not it wasn't um but it, we are, were originally there to possibly spend two thousand dollars on an oil painting and and in the course of milling around i found a, a twenty dollar object that i wanted uh, and i was either going to keep it for myself or gift it it, right. it was nice it was, it was a twenty dollar piece of glass it wasn't a big deal um but this person running this estate sale when I, when I walked up to pay for it, just to get it out of the way, uh, the, the little pink price tag, don't use price tags, by the way. The yeah, th don't do that. Those adhesives. And if you buy something that has that on it, any kind of those little sticker price tag adhesives, if someone has done you the disservice of putting that on an object, get it off as soon as possible. You, 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 the, the longer it's on there, the more damage it's going to do. Right. Um, but... So the little sticker had fallen off. It, it was just like one of those little pink, pink round fluorescent it stickers, you know, and somewhere in the course of me wandering around and falling off. And I said, oh yeah, okay. So uh, I don't see the sticker on it, but this was the price and was immediately called a liar to my face. That's never good. Which was absurd. And I was just my, I was blown away. I don't care what industry you're in. If you deal with the public, right. you should never assume that someone's of poor character and then publicly haze them. Yeah. I mean, my gosh. Bad form. Very bad form. Um, was given every chance in the world to behave better. Uh, you know, I, I even asked, okay, well then what is the price? And by the way, if you run an estate sale, maybe this is something they run into a lot. People of poor character Spotty. taking stickers yeah. off or something. I would, I don't see why that would help them. That seems to just create more confusion right. or if anything would end up with you paying more. I, I don't know, but maybe it's a thing. Um, but then if you have high value objects, then I could see keeping a piece of uh, a record on hand. Yeah. Like, at a ledger. A, yeah, like a ledger at a certain threshold, say a thousand dollar or more objects and put it's a, you can refer to if the tag falls off, Every employee on site could have easy access to a piece of paper that says, this is what this is worth. I'm sorry, customer, if the price tag got removed or switched or whatever. You know, that's easy. Yeah. And, and honestly, if it's something under $50 to ever, uh, the amount of money this man now lost. Right. So we'll never go back. We will sales. never go back. And none of our patrons will ever source from him. Uh, the network of other people that do what we do will be advised to never <laughs> interact because it's so unpleasant. It's so distasteful. I was yelled at. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it was, and I, 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 I had to ask him not to yell. It, it, the whole thing was, so if you work with the public, do not do that. Right. I would also say, why for any reason? I don't care what you're, don't have these biases. Don't assume that it, it, you can treat someone better or maybe, or worse or based on what you think their income status is, uh, maybe based on how they're dressed or whether they're the same gender view. I'm sure there's a million biases because the whole thing seemed to settle down quite a bit once William walked into the room. Suddenly this man was less comfortable yelling at me and bullying me and that felt odd. Yeah. Um, but. Well, estate sale guys like that just aren't really worth it. They're not really worth dealing with. 
I mean, some estate sale guys, apparently. What, what now we know, yeah. right? And now everyone we work with, and to be fair, every single thing, uh, we don't usually go to less than 15 acre, less than 50, 20 bedroom estates. Uh, so I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, and that's why, that's why they don't make money. Even if they have good antiques from people like us, because they do not know how to behave in a professional fashion. I would say, even if you see someone actively trying to, I don't, would it be called pickpocketing an object or trying to take a label off an object, yeah. then the, the wisest thing to do in that scenario, well, first, if, if it's going to resort to security, it's going to resort to security. There's nothing you can do about that. You walk up quietly and you relieve them of whatever they've done or taken and you have the right to refuse service and you discreetly, quietly ask them to remove themselves. You would never... I don't know, even if someone were really stealing, make everyone else uncomfortable. And it's just, and to have someone assume that I of people would steal an object less than a hundred dollars. It's just, and don't assume based on the way people are dressed. Right. right? Like we, William and I, um, whether you're an estate seller or you're someone like us, here's, some, here's a knowledgeable tip. Uh, if you want to do what we do, or if you're someone who wants us to spend money in a pleasant atmosphere at your business, we will often dress down, especially if we're looking for um, a specific object. Say like, again, say like an oil painting uh, that we want to source and authenticate for a patron who's looking for that specific object. We don't necessarily want to draw a lot of attention to ourselves or look like we're very experienced. Sometimes in an atmosphere like that, other people will start following you around, asking you for advice, asking you for information, um, or because you're, say, very dressed up in an informal atmosphere. Atmosphere, all it just it attracts a lot of attention. If anything, it could create more bitters for the same object that you want for your patron. Right. So we will also we will very much like sometimes keep. We, keep a low profile, we will show up. And sometimes we drive hours in the car too. So we don't want to be hot and uncomfortable. We will often wear t-shirts. Yeah. Uh, we've been known to wear sneakers. Uh, sometimes much like weddings. I don't know for all those girls out there that you think you're going to wear your beautiful Gucci heels into this wedding. And then you're walking down a dusty gravel driveway for, you know, a quarter of an acre, uh, fresh cut grass. Uh, it, it, it's, it's kind of a nightmare. So we will dress down. So assuming that someone walks into your establishment or place of business because they're, say, wearing a um, sweatshirt with a hood, like, we'll wear hoodies, mm -hmm. that they are don't have $20,000 burning a hole in their pocket for your antiques. Do not assume that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and do not ever treat anyone, based on any assumption, poorly. It's a good tip. I just, okay, moving on. So, yeah, so I just, oh, he lost so much money. <laughs> All of these objects we did, I think most of them did today, not all of the crystal. We are slowly parsing together a collection of specific crystal objects for one of our patrons. And that kind of goes back to what I sort of mentioned. You can email us about that if you're interested in that sort of thing. There, there's a 5% fee, which is worth the most, less than most auction houses. I feel like I'm talking very fast, but these videos take up a lot of, uh, is it like gigabytes? We yeah. go to load them. So I try to get through a lot of information for people really quickly, but uh, so you can email us if you're interested in finding out more about it. It is less than an auction house is, um, you know, bidders uh, premium. Yeah. Um, and, and it's, you basically tell us what you want. It, it's really helpful. It. Yeah. We keep an eye out for it. We'll seek it out actively. We'll devote more man hours to that sort of a thing. Uh, I think right now it's at 5% uh, across the board. Um, and then you, when we find that object, uh, we work very hard to get it for as less as we can for you. Um, and then also we give you first access to it. So we message you and say, we have it before we make it public or available in the shop or available to anyone else. So, cause I, I feel like I mentioned that sometimes and maybe people still don't explain what a procure or a finder's fee is. Um, but so we're slowly doing that with this. We have a lot of requests for brilliant cut crystal and we're trying to work our way through them. That's why I said mostly it's 5%. There, there are some where we have more than one patron on the finders list that wants specific Murano glass vases in certain heights, for instance, and two or three of them even want the same colors, two or three of the same colors. Yeah. 
So at that point, then what we have to do, it was first come first serve, who was first on the list, but then we also have to start raising the, the finder's fee so that, you know, whoever's paying the most gets first dibs and then it comes down the list. And then once that person's had one object, we move to the next person on the list. Right. It's all very fair. We handle it very well. Um, but again, if you want to be added to that list, if you want a Murano piece, that's a specific color, specific size, and you want us to buy it, usually we won't buy a $500 glass fragile Murano object to put in the shop. If you want us to buy that piece from an estate sale for you, you have to tell us, right? You have, and you have to pay that little fee. So, except for the crystal, for the exception of the, the crystal that we are parsing together, everything on the table we got today, I believe. Some beautiful, beautiful books. Oh, look at this. That's gonna go to a restore. Um, what else? What do you wanna talk about? I did get the Afghan. A, a lot of people, a lot of younger people recently have been saying that they want more textiles. So even though it's not like a very, we love that people love vintage objects. It doesn't have to be a super expensive right. antique for us to start looking for them for you. Macrame, crochet purses. If you want it, I will put more of it in the shop. So find that beautiful one today. It's about the, the pre-Murano. That is, that is Murano. I was just talking about Murano. Yeah. So... Uh, Alfredo Barbini, I believe, 1950s. This is called a folded glass piece. If it were Fenton, if it were USA, we'd call it crimped edge or napkin or ruffled. But when we talk about Italian in English, we say folded <laughs> because it's a little more elegant. I think it's catching the gold. It is. There. See, can you see the camera? Oh, you can't yeah. see the camera from your angle because I'm holding it angle. That's that's a new word. Close enough. That's where I'm thinking in Italian and speaking in English, bambino. <laughs> so, <laughs> in gold. So, yeah, that's a really nice one. That one has a lot of gold in it. They don't always have gold, the Alfredos. Uh, I've seen them with the darker, even with black glass interior spikes, darker reds. Mm -hmm. But they always have that classic swirl. Um, this piece is, gosh, I want to say... I mean, it does have a lot of gold and it is 1950s. Uh, so if you have a piece like this, let's say, sorry, yes. little glitch there. So uh, technical glitch, total failure. That's going to be an odd splice. I'm sorry that you all had to listen to it and deal with it. So uh, the Bambi, uh, about 120 without the gold. You could get more with the gold, gold, especially that gold and red. Uh, very desirable. Yeah. Uh, honestly, we won't charge more for it. We, we love that someone's going to end up with this beautiful piece. And there are so many people who love Murano. We want to help them get little pieces like this into their collection. So, you know, eight to nine, eight to 10 inches, fold the lip, that, that white and red known provenance, perfect condition, 120 to start right now, as of today, that market could rise, that market could fall. Could fall. I, I should remind people of that. Uh, we could talk about the little Denmark birds. I love these little birds. See, this is one of those charming little things that I can never leave behind that I always pick up. This is why we open the shops, so that little, so that people could have beautiful little people. They're not highly monetarily, you know, valuable, but they're valuable in my heart. <laughs> it's they're so corny. <laughs> they're really sweet. They're um, a hooved guard. They're dissings, and they're these little Denmark birds. Sometimes you'll find a set of five, you know, two of the larger, three of the smaller ones. It's nice when you can find them like this without any of the chips on their little tails and their little beaks. So a set like this, these are the two larger birds, $25. Again, we lump in shipping and handling. So someone, if someone prices their little bird on eBay a little different from us, don't hold it against them. Right. There's a lot of different things that go into, oh, that one's actually got his little sticker. I just snagged them so quickly to add to my little pile. I didn't even check for this. I, I checked for damage and I didn't even check for shelf wear. I was just like, I have to have them. I don't care right. if they have shelf wear. So <laughs> that's cool. What else we could talk? We've got a Fenton basket. We've got this. I don't know. Can you reach that one? I can. So you would call this frosted glass. Some people call it satin. Usually you only use the word satin when it's a color, like one of the pastels. But you'll see people call this satin as well when it's clear. So this is clear uh, frosted Fenton. I think you can actually make out their little oval. Oh, it's hard in this light. It's very difficult. You can see the oval, you can see a little bit of the F, but so $25 to $30 on that piece. Again, depending on the market, 
uh, uh, there are much more colorful baskets than right. this. Don't think that this is the only fit and basket. Uh, they, they come all the way through, oh, I want to say four decades with these baskets in fit and glass. And you'll see them all sorts of styles and colors done really well. Purples, white edges, snow edges, um, swirled, uh, the, the little handle will often be done in an iridescent or a different color. So have that piece. We have another little basket on the table since we're talking about baskets. Talk about this one. I think this one's Imperial. Yeah, don't, don't hold my feet to the flames on that. Cause honestly, the Imperials, this is a carnival glass marigold. Uh, again, a glass basket. As I go, uh, really unprofessionally. Uh, um, I would say federal, usually the federal pieces have a substantially more decoration than this that I've yeah. seen. But they're also the only ones I kind of know to do that base in this coloring. That kind of, that's a very classic Starburst. So I don't know. I don't know. It is vintage. It is marigold carnival glass. It is iridescent, as you can see. Um, 25 to $26. It's not Fenton. And honestly, the orange is not bright enough. Yeah, it's kind of the, muted. That's why I'm giving it a low premium. Um, I am. And I think I actually saw a little crack when you were moving it around, which is I, I instantaneously dropped it down in my head. Yep. See? So if this was that beautiful, if they had used a lot of the salt oxides and it was that brighter orange all the way down to the base, we talk about the color going all the way to the right. base of the structure, then I would, I would, and of course, if it was undamaged. This one has not an exterior crack, but it has what looks like an internal, that's a pressure fracture. So that's when you can't feel it on the outside of the glass, but it is there and it is inside the glass. Yeah, it's smooth on both sides too. Yeah, it's smooth on both sides, but it's there. Yeah. So I would say at most $25, $26, a better piece, you could get more than that. Absolutely. Especially to, I mean, people love colored glass. It, yeah. Colored glass, red colored glass, it carnival really glass. A piece, this is Fenton. So here you have a Fenton, um, it's so out of focus. Why did it do that? Is that better? This, better. Yeah, yeah. this one's 10 and a half inches. These usually range uh, 8 to 11 inches. So it's 10 and a half, a little more desirable, a little bit taller, really good. Um, diamond and rib pattern, see, cobalt, blue. cobalt blue. The so the blue glass color. itself is blue all the way through. You can see it from the top as well. Do we have enough light for that? Oh yeah, there it is. See that? So the structure of the glass internally is all that beautiful cobalt blue and then that lovely iridescence is right. an exterior application. And this is called pulled glass because it is hand pulled. Sometimes it's called swung. Again, almost like taffy, like they're making taffy when they create it. Uh, this this one is not perfect. I mean, I'm. Um, it's got some wear. It has this. This would be considered on piece like this. Wear this heavy is almost damage. Mm -hmm. So, and this one's not got his little. Foil sticker, sticker, sticker. I'm doing that a lot right now. But uh, that doesn't reduce value, not having the sticker. These are known pieces by these brands, but it is desirable. Right. Um, and if you see something like this, especially on Fenton, don't try to scrub it out. It's it's oh, kind gosh. of scratched into the glass. Gosh, gosh, yeah. yeah. Tell so, them. So no, spread, no scrubbing. Don't think it's rust. Don't rub it off. <laughs> yeah. don't, you don't. only kind of exacerbate the situation and, and apply more damage. Right. So, right. Go, know, don't, microfiber cloth to kind of wipe it off with the of dirt and grime or dust, but don't scrub or, or really uh, scrub too hard. Yeah, I wouldn't even wipe too hard. Yeah. Yeah, dust. Mic that's perfect. Yeah, microfiber. Yeah. It, unless you know what duster. you're doing. Yes, or a feather duster. Right. Just one light feather dust. Unless you know what you're doing, unless you've researched it, unless you're a restorer, unless mm -hmm. you, you know you're a salvager, that, that's a little bit different. If you know what you're doing, honestly, on a piece like Fenton like this, there's not much you can do about that, even if yeah. you know what you're doing. So do not keep making this situation worse. That's a, that's a great point for people to know. Yeah, don't try to clean it. Don't try to mm -hmm. clean it. So that's the ribbed and diamond pattern. You, this one actually does not have that cross hatching of the diamonds inside the pattern. The, sw the swinging on the top is beautiful. I'm sorry, I'm like playing with the phone now because I'm entranced. Um, but down here, you see that little curve? So that's that rib structure and then the curve. So that's how you know that that's that Fenton design, that pattern. And then of course the cobalt blue right. with it, another big hint. Right. So even though it doesn't have its little sticker, 
And even though the earlier pieces only had the little stickers and are on stamps, you still know it's a Fenton. What have we talked? We talked a lot about all the glass. Talked about the more mom new. What else do you want to talk about? We got a little. Um, that the, that's the a jewelry. Reed and Barton plate. We got a Reed and Barton teapot. Yes. I I couldn't. This this one's too perfect for the store. It's a great one. What which plate? The jewelry. Jewelry, jewelry, jewelry. Oh yeah, we got some jewelry. Beautiful pieces. I haven't, none of these are jumping out at me. Those are art glass, aren't they great? Yeah, yes, the, the colors are so striking. The green, oh, and so what I will do as a seller, what I choose to do, oh, look at this, the green ones. <gasps> They're amazing. They're amazing. Look at that go. So sparkly. So, and I love that they're they're tiny. They're, they're not these huge, big, bulbous buttons, right. which um, I just love that they're delicate. They're so well done. What, so what I'll do, especially when I see uh, three pieces that really belong together, like three sets of earrings like this, I will, you know, curate a co collection to then sell as a grouping inside of the Etsy shop because I enjoy doing that for people. Not everybody does that that right. way. If you want to sell them singly, individually, if that works for you, absolutely. But I enjoy it. Like, I'll probably, the little seahorses that I just couldn't leave behind, I'll probably put the beautiful little brooch and seahorses together. Nothing really screams out to me designer here. These are Clea sewed. Those are um, not incredibly well done and also not incredibly vintage or antique, I should say. They are vintage, but they're not antique. Uh, but they're so pretty. I'll probably wait until I have a bracelet or something to go with that. Yeah. I'll, I'll, so I'll look to put together. I did a, a beautiful, did you see that I put a, like, I put all the Clea sewed pendants, that Victorian yeah, pendant. Very pretty. I created a nice little um, collection for someone that just went into the shop. And uh, so if you ever see anything on this table, by the way, that you simply have to have, but you don't want to pay the, the finder's fee and, and, you know, be on that list to have first access before the public, before it goes into the shop, I usually get everything that's in the videos into the shop within... One or two weeks. One or two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> he said two, he backtracked, and then he, he doubled down. So... <laughs> I would like to say that I get everything into the shop within about a week, but that's, that's probably fair. not true. <laughs> William's trying to edge his bed. He's like, there's, there's times where he, it takes you a while. So within 14 days, you know, um, I do try. I really try. So if you just keep an eye on the shop after a video, I'm sorry if you have to watch the shop for 14 days in a row in order to get what you want, but I do try to get it in within a week. It just doesn't always work out that way. A little derpy horse it's kind of a trendy word it's kind of a millennial gen z word because of his little mouth his, his little mouth is kind of um it's, <laughs> it's a little downturned this again a piece like this oh thank you that's better see it's a little <laughs> he's, he's got some derpiness he's a little derpy but <laughs> The color. Yeah. And, and again, a piece like this not worth a ton of money. This is a hobby craft piece. Right. But I just thought, how brave. Look at the colors. Look at the blue horse. Some choices. Someone made some courageous choices yes. on this piece. What else should we talk about? Oh, we could talk about the, this is my favorite piece of the day. The dogwood mug is amazing. That's white dogwood. That flower. Flower. Because it's the flower of... Do you know? You don't know. No one would know this. Like Virginia. North... And that's a good guess. That's not... That's roses. That's roses. You're right. I love you. Oh. But no. Yeah. It's been a long day. <laughs> we are so tired. What time is it? It's like 10 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Forgive us. Dogwood is the state flower of Virginia, <laughs> I think. That's my, my guess. That's a good guess. I don't know if that's true. It but, was in a movie. He, no. It was in West Wing. American president. American president. You're right. It's a flower. And but a tree, I was closer so. than you. It's a flower in a tree. Okay. Wow. We got there in the <laughs> end. So that's amazing. This piece by Ken and Carolyn Poole. Amazing. Signed. 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 You can see both of their signatures here. Mm -hmm. North Carolina. They own their, they do their own pottery. Beautiful store. Just, um, I mean, they're amazing. They've done commission pieces, ceramic, uh, you know, uh, like single or limited edition pieces to for the Raleigh's uh, bicentennial like commission pieces. It, I'm for the 
for the city they've been commissioned to work, which is always great for an artist to get, to get, you know, that laurel in their cap and, and really get to be known and yeah. paid well for their, I, and if you, uh, you could go to their website. I, whenever I come across a pool piece, I'm just, uh, they're pretty. I, they're it, rock house pottery. Yeah. If you, if you see, uh, maybe it's just me, all these, be like you can see the love of what they do. Their signatures are clean. The ceramic lines, the circles, it's so elegantly done. They, they've taken time to hone their craft since they opened their, their ceramic store in the eighties. They make the little handle look like a little piece of like a, like a leather strap with a button. Mm -hmm. They, th that's, the attention to these small, charming details, all significant to their state, right. uh, even the dogwood. So, and, and glazing the inside, and then the beautiful coloring and the beautiful glazing work. I just, so a mug like this, $30 any day of the week, any day of the week. It, just beautiful. So when somebody goes, uh, show me, Lex, show me what a $30 mug looks like. This is what a $30 mug looks like. Signed by both artisanal, handmade, beautifully glazed, beautifully co colored, no defects. I, I would walk into their shop and pay $45 for this mug to put it on a shelf today. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that's how you know. It, it's what do the receipts say? Where are your receipts? I have these receipts. I would buy a, a, a pot seven feet tall by them if I could afford it or get away with it. I don't think they make them that big. I don't think they do. I think the largest one I've seen by them is about two and a half feet. But <laughs> just how much would that cost for a potter to do something that tall? That's probably what you don't see it very often. Yeah, a lot. Or to glaze it without cracking in that kiln or heat. It might not even be possible. It without cracking. <laughs> so that's an amazing piece. Very beautiful. A little bit of history on them. I love talking about people, especially art artisanal. You know, these are crafters. These are American treasures. <laughs> like... What else? Um, we got a little antique porcelain and metal tray somewhere. Where is it? Where did I find a little German tray? Oh, you're pointing. Yep, there it is. Okay, so this guy, um, trying to come into focus. William's grabbing it for you all. So brass metal on the outside. This is actually an Art Deco piece, so 1930s. This one's actually almost an antique. We're almost to the 100 year mark. Where, where are we? 2022. Mm -hmm. So we're getting there seven more years and this will be 100, 100 years old. Uh, Art Deco. Did I already say that? I think I already said that. About eight inches across. This one is not in great condition. No, it's a little, little worn. It, it's, it's, yeah, it's got some, it's got some damage here. It's um lost a lot of its brass plating. Yeah. Yeah, this one isn't solid brass either. This one may not be uh, German. I don't know, those flowers. It might be a little bit newer, but that is a that is porcelain. Yeah. Can you flip it over for me? Sorry, I, I should have looked closer. It, it is porcelain. It, you know what it is? I've seen this done better. I've yeah. seen this done a lot better. So again, that so I'm adjusting the price in my mind. I've seen these go for hundreds. There are Dresdens that are sterling silver in perfect condition that look like this. Hundreds. I mean, larger up to up to four hundred. So again, if it's if it's a certain type of porcelain, if it's a beautiful condition, certain types of metal, you can get pieces that look a lot like this, um, misleadingly that are much much finer. And would be worth quite a bit more. I would say almost this is thirty five. It is, and it it is almost an antique. It is vintage. Uh, it is porcelain. It is brass plated on metal. But because of the condition of the metal, this would be a beautiful piece as a a little tea serving tray. Yeah. Just sat on someone's coffee table. So when it's tea for two, me and you, right? Sit down and you and your hostess can set your teacups here. But it's like a double wide saucer. Yeah, it's almost like a privet, but not because yeah. it has the handles. So, but something to look out for. A lot of people might assume that's like plastic. It, it's not. Yeah. So if you see a piece like this, take the time to look, take the time to get to know it in the materials. This one's a porcelain and a brass plated metal. The, you know, the German pieces, the authentic German pieces, that would be worth quite a bit more. The, the little scrolls, I can't, right here on the handles, 
see these are not these are not handled well the handles are not handled well these <laughs> these are not it's 10 30 p.m so these would be better uh they would have more scroll work towards the outer edges they would have like beautifully little little knobs very well rounded these are all things you can look for for a better piece right. that would be more valuable or if you have one of these in your home and you're saying oh mine is nicer oh it is silver oh it is a little bit bigger the condition is better oh it does have a, more fineness and, and refinement to the handles they're done they're handled better that's worth more so to give everyone kind of i don't know an awareness okay conscientiousness people want to know how to evaluate things yeah. that's what i get the most questions about give us prices of specific objects give us provenance give us history give us country we want to know we want to know when i'm in a store like when i'm thrifting wh what is worth money this is worth some money this is worth about 35 dollars mm -hmm. in this condition in this state right now a bigger nicer piece you come across it do not leave it behind right. get it because beautiful and then what else do we have we have some italian hand painted Spoon holders, you know, you put next to the stove so you can set down your stirring spoon from your sauce without getting everything saucy, without putting on your nice wood cutting board, maybe. Especially if it's a beautiful inlay wood cutting board or something like that. <laughs> These are great. This one is vintage. This one is not all that old. I would say, gosh, I can't make it out if there's even a year in there, but I would say 2002, something yeah, like that. That makes sense. I see that you think a little later maybe maybe yeah 2005 maybe at the latest yeah i wouldn't say 90s uh, these were a little yeah. bit brighter and the yellows were um, a bit more garish in the 90s and you would see brighter blues these are a little more subtle but again italian hand painted yeah. these are nice and everybody wants these it, these are one of those things that everyone remembers their parents having and never realizes they need until they start cooking for themselves and they are necessary. And they are necessary and they are amazing. And they're also beautiful decor when you're not using them. They're just beautiful to leave in a kitchen. So great little set. We might have to sell those together because they complement each other so well. Yeah. Someone might want to set those next to each other. I could see someone, if you were reselling these, you could split these and sell them separately. Absolutely. But we probably won't do that just because they, they make a charming little pair. What else? Oh, this beautiful piece that I could not leave behind. I have no idea who it's been made by. Um, I, I haven't researched that much into the signature. And I can't, I don't want you to have to reach for it either. Yeah, we're talking about this one. It's too, still too far to reach, but. You know what's amazing? If you open that lid, there's another beautiful maple leaf under the lid. Can you open the lid? I can do that. Ah, see? That's what got me. Yeah. I already knew the quality was there. I already knew the glaze, the finish, the colors. It's beautiful. This is a gallery piece. So when you're talking about the difference between like, let me keep holding that, yeah. hobby craft and <laughs> gallery. Right? No offense, Pony. No offense, Derpy Pony. I love you. And someone is going to love and cherish you because I do. Someone needs you in their life. But, uh... Yeah, just uh, this is so well done. Yeah. It, but it, it is so obviously completely hand done and it is so unique. Even the, the, the way the colors are pulled and the iridescence, you can kind of see it here. Yeah, That's good enough. You have to go over there. See this? This is amazingly well done. I can twist it for you. I don't want to com compare it to the pools. Beautiful dogwood, because that's not fair. These are two different styles. <laughs> but this is also it's just so, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I just, this one, I'm having a hard time. I don't know. You may not see that one in the shop, guys. I might <laughs> have to add that to my collection. Because <laughs> it, it, it's, I love that. I love that touch. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so um, I don't want to... I, it's hard to give a price on that one. If I if I had to put it in the shop today with no more knowledge or provenance, that is understanding of the background of the maker and everything else. If you don't know what the word provenance means, that's all. It means fancy French word for knowing who made a piece or where it came from or who had it before you. Uh, I would say $60. Yeah. As is undamaged without me knowing anything about it, which I really don't simply based on the quality 
the structure, it's an obvious handmade ceramic. It's an obvious gallery piece. And it's been done really, really well. But if I knew more about, like if I knew it was California pottery, if I knew who the potter was, I, it, again, so if you have a piece that's like this, don't assume that it's not worth more mm -hmm. without looking into it. I'm just based on my current knowledge. And you know, when someone is an honest person, when they're willing to admit that they're still studying, be out there, be growing, be studying, be so learning. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, there's California pottery is mind blowing, the amount of potters. I've, I've only gotten through about the 60s and only really Northern California, the Southern California kilns are just even more. Okay, what else? We, we, let's at least talk about this a little, mm -hmm. really quick. So, because everyone's always glass, glass, glass. They, they want to know so much about glass. So Heat Proof USA, this is federal. He's, there's your shield. There's your sign. If it looks like a fireman's uniform. There we go. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm messing you up. There you go. I was moving the phone and you were moving the cuff Trying and it, it wasn't light, coming right. together. So these, if, if you ever happen to see one in its original shelf box, Moon glow. That's what it's called. So not just milk glass, not just opalescent glass, moon glow, federal milk glass. And you can see why. So obvious 50s, 60s. <laughs> like, just very, these are amazing. Very cool. So you have the cream, the sugar, and this little bowl. And I imagine you could find more of these little bowls yeah. if you sought them out. These are cereal bowls. These are 60 cereal bowls. Super neat color. But it's neat to just a set of three. Yeah. Uh, 26, $28, throw in the bowl for free. The bowl is hard because you don't have more of them and yeah. it actually isn't part of this pair. The sugar and the, and the creamer are our pairing that would have been sold originally together. So I would say, you know, at most $28 for all three pieces, but really nice. I think I covered a lot of stuff. Yeah, I think so. I think a lot maybe, of fun pieces. yeah, and talked a little bit about dates and times. And do you see my little bunny? I couldn't leave him. I, I couldn't leave him. Easter is coming up. So I mean, look at that. I can't, sometimes I can't help myself. <laughs> Uh, these beautiful books. A lot of these will be going to the shop soon. Those two, unfortunately, if if you're not the person who paid us the finder's fee to keep an eye out for these volumes, those are already spoken for. So, good little video. And again, you can find us on Etsy. You can find us on YouTube. You can definitely... Do we have a Facebook page? We have a Facebook, we have a Facebook page. page. You can message us via our Facebook page. And you can ask questions. And you can also let us know what you want videos for uh what you'd like to see more of in the shop just in general we'd yeah. love to know i don't know maybe you're really into i would not have picked this yeah. up today if i didn't have 10 different people ask me to start looking out for items like this yep. beautiful afghans and things done really well different quotes, colors by hand yeah. yeah quilts yeah i got a couple quotes that can go into the shop as well for some nice textiles. So that's all for now awesome like subscribe tell everyone to watch or at least to listen to you while you talk about everything you learned so that they get to learn it too. Or at least tell four or five people. Do not assume if you're a seller that somebody has less knowledge than you without asking first. Absolutely. We all know how patronizing that can be. Yep. When you walk up and someone's like, do you know what this is? And then you're in that uncomfortable situation. Do I stand here feeling uncomfortably dishonest because they're assuming that I don't have experience in this? Or do I interject and tell them I actually have quite a bit? It's just so uncomfortable. Yeah. So don't do that to people. That's one of those customer service. That's like a Miss Manners thing. I don't know. Don't do that. But I definitely ask. You can ask somebody. If you're selling somebody a beautiful fet and piece or if you're collecting beautiful fet and ask, yeah. do you know about this? It never hurts to ask. Nope. Okay. Thanks, everybody. And we'll try to do more videos soon. I don't yeah. know what the next one will be on. But I have no idea. But cheers. Cheers.